The 17th century in England was a period marked by significant social, political and economic changes. Among the many developments of this era, the rise of coffee houses stands out as a particularly influential cultural phenomenon. Coffee houses emerged as vibrant hubs of intellectual exchange, social interaction and political discourse. Coffee was introduced to England in the mid-17th century, initially as a curiosity among the elite. The first coffee house in England was established in Oxford in 1650 by a Turkish Jew named Jacob. This new social institution quickly gained popularity and spread to London, with the first London coffee house opening in 1652 by Pasqua Rosé, a Greek servant of a merchant named Daniel Edwards. By the end of the century, there were hundreds of coffee houses across England, particularly concentrated in major cities and towns. The appeal of coffee houses lay in their unique atmosphere. Unlike taverns or inns, coffee houses were places where patrons could engage in conversation, read newspapers, and discuss a wide range of topics. From politics and business to science and literature, the beverage itself coffee was appreciated not only for its stimulating effects, but also for the sober and alert mindset it promoted, which contrasted with the often inebriated state of tavern goers. Coffee houses played a crucial role in fostering intellectual and cultural exchange during the 17th century. They became known as penny universities, a term reflecting the relatively low cost of entry, the price of a cup of coffee, and the wealth of knowledge and ideas available within. These establishments attracted a diverse clientele, including writers, scientists, philosophers, merchants and politicians, all of whom contributed to the vibrant intellectual environment. One of the most notable examples of the intellectual exchange fostered by coffee houses was the Royal Society, founded in 1660. Many of its early members, including prominent figures like Robert Hooke, Christopher Wren and Isaac Newton, frequented coffee houses. These venues provided a space for discussing scientific experiments, sharing discoveries and debating theories, thereby contributing to the advancement of scientific knowledge. In addition to scientific discourse, coffee houses were centers of literary activity. Writers and poets used these spaces to share their works, seek feedback and engage in discussions about literature and art. The exchange of ideas in coffee houses influenced the development of new literary forms and genres contributing to the richness of English literature. The political impact of coffee houses was profound. They served as informal arenas for political debate and discussion, allowing ordinary citizens to engage with the pressing issues of the day. This was particularly significant during a century marked by political turbulence, including the English Civil War, the Interregnum, the Restoration and the Glorious Revolution. Coffee houses provided a space where people could gather to read and discuss newspapers, pamphlets and broadsides. These printed materials, often available for free or at a low cost in coffee houses, informed patrons about current events and political developments. The accessibility of news and the opportunity for open discussion helped shape public opinion and fostered a more informed and politically engaged citizenry. The role of coffee houses in political discourse was not without controversy. The government recognized their potential as sites of political agitation and dissent. King Charles II, for example, issued a proclamation in 1675 to suppress coffee houses, citing concerns about the spread of sedition and false news. However, public outcry and the economic importance of coffee houses led to the rapid repeal of the proclamation, highlighting the entrenched position of these institutions in society. Beyond their intellectual and political functions, coffee houses were vital spaces for social interaction and networking. They brought together people from various walks of life, creating opportunities for social mixing and the exchange of ideas across different social strata. Merchants, for instance, used coffee houses as venues for conducting business, negotiating deals and networking with potential partners. The inclusive nature of coffee houses also contributed to their role in breaking down social barriers. While some establishments catered to specific groups or professions, many were open to anyone who could afford a cup of coffee. This inclusivity fostered a sense of community and facilitated the flow of information and ideas. The social aspect of coffee houses was further enhanced by their distinctive atmosphere. Unlike the rowdy and often chaotic environment of taverns, coffee houses were characterized by a more orderly and respectful ambiance. 
The absence of alcohol contributed to a more focused and engaged form of social interaction, where conversation and debate took center stage. The cultural impact of coffee houses extended to the arts influencing music, theater, and visual arts. Coffee houses often hosted musical performances, poetry readings, and theatrical sketches, providing a platform for artists to showcase their talents. This not only enriched the cultural life of the period, but also contributed to the development of new artistic forms and expressions. The visual arts were also influenced by the coffee house culture. Coffee houses frequently displayed paintings, prints, and other artworks, creating an environment where patrons could appreciate and discuss visual art. This exposure to art in a social setting helped democratize access to artistic works and encouraged public engagement with the arts. The literature of the time also reflects the influence of coffee houses. Many writers and satirists of the period, including Samuel Pepys and Jonathan Swift, wrote about coffee houses, capturing their unique atmosphere and the lively interactions that took place within them. These literary depictions contribute to our understanding of the cultural significance of coffee houses in 17th century England. The economic impact of coffee houses was significant as well. They contributed to the growth of the coffee trade, which became an important part of the English economy. The demand for coffee stimulated trade with regions like the Ottoman Empire, where coffee beans were sourced and led to the establishment of trade routes and commercial networks. Coffee houses themselves became profitable enterprises, attracting a steady stream of customers and generating income for their owners. The popularity of coffee houses also created economic opportunities for other businesses such as printers, who supplied newspapers and pamphlets and artists who provided decorations and entertainment. The cultural impact of coffee houses in 17th century England was profound and multifaceted. These establishments emerged as important centers of intellectual exchange, political discourse, social interaction, and artistic expression. They played a crucial role in shaping public opinion, fostering a more informed and engaged citizenry, and contributing to the advancement of knowledge and culture. Coffee houses not only provided a space for the exchange of ideas, but also influenced the social and economic fabric of the time. Their legacy can be seen in the continued importance of similar public spaces for discussion and debate in modern society. Understanding the cultural impact of coffee houses in 17th century England offers valuable insights into the ways in which social institutions can influence and shape the course of history.